to talk to you this morning about something that I've entitled Fear Versus Faith. And um, I talked about this uh, for a few Sunday nights and over the last few days just kind of praying and reflecting and just trying to hear from God. I felt like the Lord was drawing me back to this for some reason. And then as I got to studying and looking and, and uh, kind of putting things together, putting down what the Lord was giving me, I feel like it might even be a couple weeks here that we'll talk about this. But I began to think about this uh, on the way to church this morning. Really, when it comes to fear and faith, I think those are two areas that hit everyone probably in this room and that would call themselves followers of Christ. The reality of it is, even if you are not a follower of Christ or you've not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you still have faith if you're here in this room. Because you have faith to believe that if I come to church this morning, I'm probably going to get something I need or I'm going to get something that will help me. Or you even have put faith that God loves you and that you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So wherever you are in your journey, you have somewhat of a faith. And I've talked about this before, and you've heard other people say the same thing. You have faith that you don't even realize because you're sitting on a pew having faith and confidence and trust that that pew is going to hold you. Right. And that the, uh, come on. So, so faith really deals with so many areas of life. And then when we get into fear, how many people know there are things that we all deal with with fears? Now, how many people know there are phobias that people have? Someone said it's really not a fear of heights. It's a fear of falling. Yeah. I don't know what I believe about that. Um, it's interesting because as I've gotten older, you know, when I was a kid, I'd climb up in the tree. When I was a kid, I'd ride a roller coaster and do whatever. If I watched someone on uh, social media, we went to uh, St. Louis. We stopped through there on the way to Oklahoma City, and I was watching a video of them making the arch back in whatever it was, the 50s or 60s. And I was watching that video and literally had to walk away because my hands started to sweat. I mean, these guys were up there in just a hard hat, no cable, and, and you know, dress shoes on, walking on this beam, all that. High. And watch something on TV and my hands start sweating. I'm like, I get all, and I can't handle heights. So I don't know if I'm afraid of heights or I'm afraid of falling, but I don't like heights that well anymore, okay? Uh, how many people know there's a healthy fear too? Sometimes there's a fear that keeps you from harm. Uh, there's a fear I know if I touch my stove when it's hot, it's going to burn me. And sometimes I forget and it still burns me. Come on, somebody. Um, one time, for some reason, and I don't know why I did it, uh, I had when I first got a little fire pit, it had a little uh, covering that went over it. And with, the, with that fire pit came this wooden handle with a metal rod that had little prongs on it to where you take that and you lift the... Uh, uh, lid off of the fire pit for some reason my cognitive senses forgot that that was still hot because how many people know sometimes even after the fire goes out it's still hot and I remember when my fingers began to weld the skin to the thing and I tried to let go of it so there is a healthy fear as well uh, the Bible talks about fear in a reverence to God in that way that God is God and he is to be feared to be reverent and who he is but I believe what I want to talk about in this series, or at least this message today, is our faith in God can definitely be increased. I, you know, it, it's like the the uh, the servant that came to Jesus and said, "I have faith, but help my unbelief." When Peter sunk in the water, Jesus said, "Oh, ye of little faith." He had faith to get out of the boat, but he didn't have enough faith. He had an underdeveloped faith. So here's what I'm saying about this fear versus faith is I believe everyone in this room, anyone listening online, at, at, at maybe now or maybe later, all of us could say that we have a little bit of faith. If you went down the streets of Parkersburg or the streets of America and stuck a mic in someone's face and asked how many people believe in God, 90% of the people would say they believe in God. So there's, there's a little bit of faith. But how many people say my faith needs developed and increased in really believing who God is and really believing God is who he says he is. And this is the most important part that God loves me and forgives me and saves me and calls me redeemed, righteous, holy and whole. Now, I can't say enough about that piece right there, because if I really see God as who he is, 
I'll truly see myself as he sees me, and then I should have no reason to fear. An unhealthy fear, an endemic fear, a fear that comes in against us spiritually has been abolished by a person named Jesus Christ, and he no longer wants his children to live in fear, but to walk in freedom. Come on. Right. Come on. So here's the reality of it is, whether I'm afraid of heights or I'm afraid of falling, there is that fear there. But when I have a spiritual unhealthy fear, fear of not being accepted, fear of not feeling approval, fear of what people think, fears of insecurity and doubt that keep me bound and keep me from having the peace that God wants me to have, that's what I want our faith to increase and abolish that kind of fear. Because fear entered in in creation, in the beginning. And it's interesting because it says this, that God created Adam and Eve. And of course, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. And he came and he tempted them. And when he tempted them, it says that they were disobedient. But then here's the scripture where fear entered in. It says this, that the Lord God kept his appointment with Adam and Eve and said, Adam, where are you? The scripture says this, that Adam was naked and afraid. That's where fear entered in. Through the first Adam, the endemic nature that all of us have to fight through insecurities and doubts and, and reassurances that we need in our life. All of those are the human nature. But how many people know that the second Adam came, which his name is Jesus, and he provided a way to where he made us overcomers and victorious through the word and by faith through grace that we have a relationship with him, that God loves us. We no longer have to walk in the bondage. Right. Of fear. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we look at this, we see this fear versus faith. I want to look at the scripture in Hebrews chapter 11. And Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. And I thank you for what you want to do in us during this time and in the time and the weeks to come. That you want our faith to develop and increase in you. And you want us to abolish fears that keep us bound and rob our peace and take our joy. And so, Lord, we receive your word and we receive your truth. And I receive the things that you've given us. And I give you the praise for it now in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. You've already agreed. That means so be it. So you will receive that. As I was praying, I felt like maybe I should pray it. Maybe I should stop and say it. But sometimes, I want you to get this. I'm going to get to the scripture in a minute. Sometimes when we deal with faith, we deal with it from a standpoint of receiving from God or from a standpoint of not receiving from God. And a lot of times when it comes to faith, it comes to the issue of answer prayer or an answer prayer, a healing or not a healing. I believe that the Bible says this, that all things are possible to those who believe. So in other words, there is a possibility of faith that reaches out, that agrees and receives what God has for us. But I want you to get this and see this because I'm not talking about, well, you weren't healed because you didn't have enough faith or you weren't good enough. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about receiving something from God. In this, what I'm talking about is having faith and confidence and trust and believing God is who he said he was. The reason I'm saying that is because if you see who God truly is, then you'll truly see how he loves you. And if you truly see how he loves you, there will be no reason to walk in fear. I don't know if you can get this or not, but I'm telling you, this is stern in me. I, I put notes and pages together. I was laughing at myself today because I was actually making slides and, and, and just kept making them, making them, making them. I'm like, this thing's going to go a few weeks. This is going to go a little bit because this is my introduction today. When we talk about faith, it's truly a matter of salvation. 
But when we talk about faith, we talk about having faith that's developed. And most of the time, it deals with, when people talk about faith there, it, it's the prayer and the healing and the answer and the unanswered. But what I'm saying is all things have to begin in truly having faith in who God says he yes. is. Right. Yes. Yeah. And if I get a true picture, because, you know what, in the church, and I'm guilty. There's too much mouth service and not enough heart believing. Yeah. Oh, preacher, I believe God is who he says I am. I, I believe God loves me. I believe God is who he says he is. I believe the word. I live the word. I, and then walk in fear and walk in doubt and walk in lack and not have peace and not have joy. There's something missing and something wrong with that picture. And I'm preaching to myself this morning, but don't go home yet. Do you agree with that? There's got to be something wrong with the picture when I say, God, I truly believe you are who you said you are. I truly believe your word is what it says it is. I truly believe that you love me in spite of myself, no matter what. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Yet I don't have any joy or peace. And I'm always afraid. I'm afraid of what you'll think. And I'm afraid of what you'll say. And I'm afraid of what you'll do. And I'm afraid of hurting you. And I'm afraid of disappointing you. And I'm afraid to do this. And I'm afraid to do that. And I'm afraid to just be who I am. And I'm a... And I just walk in constant fear all the time when the Word says that God's perfect love cast out all Amen. fear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes if we could get a true picture... And not only just say, yeah, I believe it, but in our heart believe it right. and allow it to begin. See, here's what I'm saying is let during this time allow your faith to increase. But I'm not saying faith to increase. God's going to heal your back. I'm saying faith to increase that God is who he said he is and that he loves you just as you are to where fear begins to abolish. Right. And God begins to take control. Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter. I could read this whole chapter, but I'm not going to. The first verse reads like this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. You ever hope for anything? The evidence of things not seen. You ever hope for anything and not seen it? For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Now, I've read this. I'm going to have to just be honest with you. Rico, I've read this verse 3 wrong and kind of un un misunderstood this a little bit. I want to read this slow today. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. How many people want to take the microphone and explain that verse besides maybe Rodney? <laughs> Heath. I've got some takers. You may do better at explaining this verse than I do. But here, here's what I want you to see is faith is the beginning of all things. Everybody say that. Got five things up here, and we're going to look at these in just a minute. Michelle's so good, and thank you for that. Listen to what this says, because what I've always kind of read this is it's like by faith the worlds were framed. But listen to what it says. How many people have trouble understanding things? I can't raise my hand too. I've got on this little boy's shirt. And <laughs> all this new clothing, is it, it looks cool on skinny, cool kids like Parker, but... When I wear it, it just looks like I'm overweight and need to lose weight to get a shirt that fits me. So just pray for me that I'll make it through this message. I'm going to raise my hand. There's areas I need to grow in faith. Come on, somebody. There are things I don't understand. I mean, you ever, I remember when the girls were little, they would say things like, Daddy, who, who, who invented or who created God? Where did God come from? Here's one for you. Have you ever thought about eternity? Mind blown. Yeah. But let me say this. 
Everything that deals with God is a matter of faith because if he could be explained, then we wouldn't need him. See, what we want to do is we want a world that really God is just necessary when we need him. But God is not just necessary when we need him. God is necessary all the time because God is God. Amen. And by faith, we got to believe that. Yes. But let me just give you an analogy that is kind of a trite illustration. But when I was a little boy in a Sunday school room in Chillicothe, Ohio, at 770 Jefferson Avenue, a Sunday school teacher told me about a person named Jesus and gave me the scripture, John 3, 16. And I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart and my life. There was nothing visible or tangible that happened. It wasn't like a Spider-Man movie. It wasn't like a, a vortex. It wasn't like I put on a suit and something became different. But in my heart, I felt a peace and a love and a joy like I'd never felt. Later, my mom and dad got saved in my life. And they went to church and they went to an altar and they got down on their knees and they prayed a prayer of salvation and when they got up from that there were tears of joy and there were tears of happiness and they looked different but there wasn't anything visible that just happened that you saw this light or this beam or anything and so by faith through grace I believe that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. By grace through faith I believe that when my mom and dad knelt and prayed and they went home and they had a new life and began a new lifestyle that something happened that I couldn't see. And so what this scripture and I'm going to give my little paraphrase and it wouldn't be nearly as good as Heath or Rodney but here's what it's saying is this is by, I don't understand how God made something out of nothing. But I don't understand how God made something out of nothing. I don't understand, Steve Vincent, how God took you and made you something. Matter of fact, I wasn't even there when it happened, but I see the evidence that it did happen. I don't understand how God stepped out on nothing and created everything. But when I walk out into my yard this evening and look up at a canopy over my head with beautiful stars and the moon hung in place, by faith I believe and understand that it was God that created it and set it in place. So what this writer in Hebrews is saying, it's by faith we understand that God spoke a word and created and framed the world together. Yes. Yeah. See, if that, that's where your faith has to begin. Right. Yeah. Because if God can step out on nothing and create something, <laughs> if God can become flesh and dwell among us and now live in my heart, then what am I afraid of and what am I fearing if I truly have the faith to believe that God is who he said he is and that God did what he said he would do and he holds the world in his hands and he told the moon and the stars with the rise and the sun with the rise and if he's done that, then what am I afraid of? You know, we sing the old songs when we're little kids and we need to really sing them as adults. He's got the whole in his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands. Here's the best part, Paul. He's got, Paul, he's got, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands. Won't you just give him praise for that? God is the beginning of all things. And here's the reality of what I'm saying. And what I saw, I was driving to church this morning, and, and I didn't have it in my notes, but I put it in my notes because I want to remember later. The reality of it is when it comes to faith and fear, there are no two greater things to talk about in the body of Christ or the church of right. Jesus Christ. Right. And all of us would say we have fears that are unhealthy, that steal our joy and rob our peace. And we would all say that we have faith that needs to increase. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we see this, the first thing that is up here, and I hope I preach this strong enough and good enough, is faith is the beginning of all things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's where everything begins. 
It's like, well, how'd the world get here? How'd God get here? The writer in Hebrews told us it's by faith we understand. I can't understand by myself and in a logical sense, but by faith I understand that the word is true. You understand in society we have really dumbed down truth. We've really shaded truth. We don't even really know what truth is. But can I say this? I think I can. I've got a microphone, so I'm going to. <laughs> truth is not really truth unless it's 100% truth. Real truth, true truth, 100% truth is not authentically truth unless it is 100% truth. So therefore... If the Bible says that by grace through faith I can receive Jesus Christ, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart, I confess that Jesus was the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead on the third day and I receive salvation by grace through faith. How many people say that's true? Yeah. So if that's the truth and it's in the same book with Jesus spoke and the worlds were framed and by faith I understand that, then that can't be truth without the other being truth or none of it would be true. Right. Somebody help me a little bit. I'm preaching pretty good. Because this is faith and this is fear. And what I want to see is I want to see your faith increase and your fear dissipate that is still in your joy and your peace. It's very simple. But the... the the Lord, I, he won't let me get off of this. Just in my mind, I keep stirring the same thought. If we truly see who he is, yeah. and we truly believe who he is, yeah. and we truly get a picture of who we are in him, that is the beginning right. of all things. Here's another thing. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 11, 6, the same chapter that I read of says this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. True. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews is a good book. Chapter 11 is a good book. So it pleases God. Faith allows you to receive salvation. That's the beginning of all things. It's by grace through faith. Somebody say faith. Faith gives you access to God. We can cry, I have a father, and go to the throne of grace with boldness because of God's grace, because of God's goodness. How do I do that? I do that through faith. Through faith. Now, Here's another one. This is good. Faith is required to live the life God desires for you to live. Just stop right there. Hold the slide right there. There's an old preacher. We used to sing at camp meetings all the time. And we had a preacher with us. Some one of us on the bus preaching. And there was always another guest evangelist. There was an evangelist that we sang a lot of camp meetings with. His name was Stuart McCord. And we called him Stu great man of God, and he'd be preaching like that, and he'd say, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. <laughs> that made me think of that for some reason. That's why I told you that. Hold the phone. Because the last point on this slide is the most important part of all. Faith is what truly allows you to live the life that God truly desires for you. I'm going to say that again. God desires for you to have salvation, for you to have a relationship with Him. He has a desire for you to believe Him when you don't have belief and you don't have faith. 11.6 says it displeases God. So for me to live the life that I need to live, faith is the beginning of all things, but it takes faith for me to live the life that God desires for me to live as His child and for you too. I'm not going to get through all this today. We must have faith in who God says he is. We must have faith in who God says we are. We must have faith that God will do and has done what he said he would do. That's right. Right. You know, really, we talk about having faith in God doing. God's already done. Right. <laughs> it's already done. I just pray God does. I just pray God does this. I pray God does that. What? Well, I'm not preaching to myself. I'm so guilty of saying that. Really, it's a done deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. All God's promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. It's right. finished in heaven and settled forever. The promises of God, the word of God. It's up to me to live in that abundance and that right. peace and to walk in the fullness of what God has for me. It is a done deal. Somebody say it's a done deal. Yeah. 
So I would say this, that all of us in this room have some faith. I would say in this room, all of us deal with fear to some degree. The reality of it is, fear not or do not be afraid is probably in the Bible, especially in Jesus' time and teaching, more than any other phrase in the Bible. Right. Right. It's amazing, isn't it? So what he's saying is, he's not saying don't have fear. He's saying don't have fear, but believe I am who I said I am and can do what I said I could do. Now here's something I put in my notes that I thought was kind of corny, but it's kind of good too. When fear knocks, answer with faith. Amen. When fear knocks, answer with faith. Now here's something uh, that we all have common fears. And I've got about 10 of these and don't get nervous. I'm only going to do about two or three of these today. We'll come back to this next week. How many people say this is worth visiting? Yeah. Yeah. So the first fear that I think we all have in common is fear of not being good enough. I deal with people all the time, and when it comes to block prayer, when it comes to block peace, when it comes to the lack of joy, the root of almost everyone I deal with in that situation is there's a spirit of unworthiness. Yeah. They can't receive the fullness of what God has for them because they feel like they're unworthy and they don't deserve what it is that God has already done for them. Right. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because he's got me on that done. Not going to do, not Done. done. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being good enough. An unworthiness that says, I don't deserve what that is. I preached on Father's Day about the prodigal son who gives the example of a loving father loving a son who didn't say anything about him being a hired servant but fell and kissed him on the neck and put the best robe on him and killed the fatted calf and put sandals on his feet and the ring on his finger. That's the kind of God that we serve who loves us, who is for us. And until we see that love, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You know what I've realized in that statement? That I'm never truly going to love you until I truly love me. But I'm not going to truly love me until I truly see who God is, the beginning of all things, and how much he loves me, and how he sees me. And when I begin to see a reflection of who I am in God through Christ, by grace through faith, then I begin to change. And all of a sudden, how many people, when you feel good about yourself, you're more lovable? I know you are because I've seen it. It's just human nature. It's like you, you build something, you do something, you get an attaboy, you, you feel like you go visit someone in the hospital, you pray, you have a good day at work, you're just feeling good about yourself. When you're like that, you tend to love people differently, don't you? Right. When the love of God comes into service, it begins to create an atmosphere to where we just love everybody and love everything. Right. Yeah. We used to sing it all, we sang songs around the altar when I was a boy growing up, we'd sing this song, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion. I know it's not about religion, it's about relationship, okay, just... But one line we'd say in that is they'd say this. It makes you love everybody. It makes you love everybody. How many people know God will make you love everybody? Yeah. And so when you get in the right positional where you see God and his love and how he loves you and how he wants you to love yourself because you're a reflection of his creation. And then when you pour out of that. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm to love you as Christ Jesus loved me and gave himself for me. And I can't do that without grace by faith. Right. And so when this thing comes, it's fear. I'm not good enough and I'm unworthy. Then I've got to answer with faith and say this, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And he's more than enough. And that makes me more than enough. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Oh, here's another one. Fear. I won't have enough. Yeah. Mm. Yep. I, you know, to make you mad, because if you're religious or you just have a little bit of something in you where you were raised, when you hear certain things, it'll make you mad and agitate you. Yeah. I'm not going to name him, but it's a pastor that I've listened to for years now. And uh, 
he said something that's probably going to make half of you mad. It agitated me, seriously, because uh, I eat everything on my plate. We went out to breakfast Saturday with my mom and dad, and I think I was the only one that ate everything on my plate. And the bad thing on my plate, I had hash browns, three eggs, eight pieces of bacon, two pieces of French toast, two pancakes. Somebody understand why this shirt didn't fit too well with that. Then a little bit, you know, it's about two o'clock. The girl said, Dad, I'm hungry. We haven't had lunch. And I, I said, I'm not hungry. And they said, no wonder. <laughs> but I grew up where you eat everything on your plate. I grew up to where it was like there's thousands of starving kids somewhere. I grew up with if you're hungry enough, you'll eat it. And I still do that, and I still believe that, and I still believe in waste not, want not. But I think this is the most thing to aggravate you the greatest is what this preacher said I never thought about. He said, really, when you have fear that you're leaving food on your plate, it's really a lack of fear of not enough and a fear of poverty that needs to be broken off your life. That's right. That's good. Just made some of you mad like I got mad. But what happens is we have such a mentality of if we just have enough and we're afraid that if we do this, then we're not going to have enough. The only problem with that is that makes you the source and not God. We just went through a situation with, with, with different things in our life, with, with pay and with things being done in jobs and in situations and circumstances. And finally, Kelly and I both just spoke up and said, let the chips fall where the chips fall. God is either our source and our supplier, and he supplies all our riches according to his glory, or he doesn't. And so what happens when I'm always afraid I'm not going to have enough? I'm afraid it's not going to be there. I'm not truly having faith, and therefore it steals my peace because I'm not having faith again right. that God created something out of nothing, right. which is the beginning of all things. So therefore, if God can take a bird to a prophet, if he can allow oil to keep pouring out of a jar for a widow who was just going to make... You know what the widow says? Well... You have anything in your house to feed this prophet? God prophet says, you have anything in your house to feed me? I'm hungry. No, I don't have anything except. See, sometimes we're afraid to give away what we do have because we don't think it's enough and we don't think God is God of more than enough. So therefore we hold on to what we have instead of walking in the fullness of what God had because if she hadn't taken that little bit of meal and that little bit of oil and released it into God's hand and said this is God's man and I'm going to bless him and I'm not going to trust the oil and I'm not going to trust the meal and I'm not going to trust myself. God, I'm going to trust you. And she just kept on pouring, kept on pouring, kept on pouring, kept on pouring. So when fear comes and says, Rob, you're not going to have enough, I've got to answer the door and say this, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. My God is more than enough, therefore I am more than enough and I have more than enough. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Now I know I've already made some of you mad. Or just agitated you. Because things like that agitated me. I had to deal with that. And I still, when I go to a restaurant, you know, I'm like, oh, boy. You ready for one more? One yeah. more. Yeah. This is my last one. Three out of ten isn't bad, is it? No. Fear of missing it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. That's right. Fear of missing it. Well, if I do, then I'm going to miss this. If I don't, then I'm going to miss this. If I don't, then I might miss this. And if I get over here, then how am I going to get back here? And if I do this, then what about this? And if I don't do this, then what about that? And we just act like God is on his throne, nervous, scared to death, scratching his head, saying, what in the world's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> when fear comes and says you might miss it or you're going to miss it, You've got to answer the door and say, Lord, you go before me. Yeah. Amen. You make a way where there is no way. Amen. 
You make streams in the desert. And you make the crooked places straight. You are God who orders my step. You establish my end from my beginning. You are God, Jehovah, Rapha. You are the God woo, who supplies all my needs according to your riches and glory. You are my provider. You are my sustainer. I'm not going to miss it. Now, I was talking to Bishop Tony Miller. I've talked to him the last several weeks quite a bit. He's been in Poland for the last couple of weeks, and he said something to me two weeks ago, and I pray that this helps you. And I said all that to say I don't want to take credit for this. He's the one that said it to me, but I think it will fit you and give you peace. Listen to what he said. He said, believe, talking about missing it. This is what he said. Believe your faith is not so fragile that if you get off track a little or you do miss it, that God through his internal and eternal GPS cannot get you back on track. Right. Right. Take a step of faith and if you miss it, then don't believe that your faith is so fragile that God through his Internal, the Holy Spirit, an eternal GPS system can't get you back on track. Your faith is not that fragile. Your God is not that minuscule. You are. What if I miss it? What if I miss it? You know what fear is? Fear is a liar, but fear is also an illusion. And I really ask for Grace, Parker, and Cameron, and Jeff, and maybe even Nikki. But I went to see a Spider-Man movie. And I, like, I mean, compared to Jeff and Parker, I know absolutely nothing. And I know very little about it, but I've enjoyed this Spider-Man things they're doing. But here's what I want you to get, and here's what I want you to see. And I wish I could depict it, and the movie so new I couldn't get a clip that I felt legally I could use. But in this movie, give me a little grace if I don't get it all right. Is it Mysterio? Mysterio, who felt like he had been done wrong, I'm really using a lot of leverage here, by the head honcho of this whole universal of superheroes, deceptively tricked Spider-Man in relinquishing his authority. That'll preach right there. Satan, who was cast out of heaven, who is the enemy of God, and we have become the friends of God through Jesus Christ, has secretly tricked you into giving up your authority that you have. So he secretly tricked him into giving up his superpower and his freedom and the authority that he had as a superhero. And Spider-Man went on to live his own normal life for a little while until finally a superhero. Do you understand if the Holy Spirit lives in you, faith and grace will always bring you back. So he couldn't stand it anymore, Rico. He said, I've got to defend what's wrong and stand up for what's right. And what he learned and saw through a girl that he liked was that everything that Mysterio was doing was an illusion. It wasn't even real. He was creating this image or this immigram through, uh, what are they called? Uh, drones. Through drones, he was creating this image and this destruction through something that wasn't even real. That creation that he was seeing and people were afraid of that was causing destruction didn't even exist. It was literally drones that was shooting the image and doing the destruction. So what he realized was this, that what you're seeing is an illusion. Yeah, good. Yeah, right, good, right. That's good. And I relinquish the power and authority that I have, but I'm about to take the power and authority that I have back because I realize, come on, Paul's with me. If I can get on the inside of what fear is, yeah. false experiences appearing real, yeah. it's really an optical illusion. The devil is a... He's a roaring lion with no teeth, seeking whom he may devour. And God's wanting to give you your peace back and your joy back and your happiness back and your marriage back and your home back. And he's wanting your faith to increase and your fear to disappear. And when 
Spider-Man got on the inside, he destroyed the image, and all that was left was these drones that were creating the images, and then he destroyed them. Go ahead and everybody stand your feet. There was a person named Jesus Christ who hung on a cross 2,000 years ago and disarmed principalities of all their power. And what we're dealing with in fear is really an illusion. And Jesus has gone in the inside and taken all power and all authority. And here's the best part, Keith. He, he's giving that power and authority back to you and me. No more fear, but joy peace on the inside. Fear versus faith. We all have faith. And it needs to grow and be developed. We all have fear. But the fear that keeps us in fear and takes our peace and takes our joy has been destroyed through the person of Jesus Christ from the inside out. Now we are victorious through God Hallelujah. by Christ who loved us and gave yes. himself for us. Yes.